Hello and welcome to this episode of Space. We're in the Soyuz Command Module, the capsule carrying astronauts on the International Space Station. How do they endure such intense physical and psychological stress? At 60, Paolo Nespoli is the oldest European astronaut, and he'll soon be back for a third time on the station. We've been following him during his training to understand how he's preparing to live for six months in space. Paolo Nespoli's third mission launches in a year loaded with symbolism. He turned 60 last April and 60 years ago, Sputnik became the world's first satellite to be launched into orbit. That was just the start of mankind's conquest of space, followed by Yuri Gagarin's spaceflight and the Apollo landings, all more than enough to influence the dreams of a young child. As a child, I grew up seeing rocket launchers going to the moon, the lunar conquest. Watching cartoons like the Jetsons about a family who lived in space and travelled around on jet scooters. Moving around in microgravity is nonetheless something one has to relearn each time. Even after months of training, the astronauts need a period of physical and mental adaptation once they arrive aboard the International Space Station. When it comes to long-term missions like my second one and the next one, you have to become part of the station to feel comfortable on board. You have to become Superman in the sense that you have to fly literally. All this takes time between four and six weeks, until you no longer have to think each time about how to move from here to there without colliding with anything. After having worked for two weeks on the construction of the International Space Station in 2007 and spent six months aboard in 2011, how will this third mission be different from the others for the Italian astronaut? This time I'll try to enjoy the sensations of being in space a bit more, instead of focusing solely on doing my best to achieve the best result. The next crew will have a busy schedule as they have to lead around 200 scientific experiments. By taking advantage of the unique conditions offered by microgravity, the astronauts aboard act like the arm of researchers on Earth. This joy of discovery is one of the things that gives you that sense of euphoria in space. It's perhaps something that adults have lost, but children still have inside them. So going to space winds the clock back and makes you younger, who knows? Astronauts are physically trained and taken care of through the years with annual physical preventative medicine that keeps them in top shape. Of course, individual conditions play an important role too. The beautiful thing about humans is that physiology is very relative, age is very relative. So we can have a very young 60 year older that is performing much better than a very old 30 year old. The way we're naturally programmed is to respond to gravity. To preserve astronauts' health during long-term missions in space, it's crucial to know in depth how and what is changing in every single function of our body. The experiment underway is trying to understand how the brain and central nervous system work so that we can see if, when weightless, our movements are as precise as they are on the ground. This machine will be tested in orbit for the first time by Paolo Nespoli and it will help to better understand how the brain adapts itself to work in weightless conditions. Paolo will get the machine into position and will do the mechanics needed to install it in the Columbus module, which is a huge task. Then he has to check if it was set up correctly on Earth and whether he can use the machine properly. The future of space exploration depends on the answers that science will provide to the well-known effects of microgravity on the human body, like, for instance, alterations of the cardiovascular system. The ISS is our foothold in space, but is used also to establish a 
a, a, a plan uh, and the knowledge base for us to go further. Bone demineralization, the uh, muscle wasting, all that could be avoided by giving a partial to a full gravity to the crew members. We need to have the vehicle to be human rated and not the human to adapt to the vehicle limitations. After the Apollo missions, no human has flown beyond the lower orbit. In the future, ESA is considering a human outpost on the moon, while NASA is focused on a long-term plan to bring astronauts to Mars. Perhaps Yuri Gagarin imagined that 60 years after his first flight in space, we would have got much further, that we would have gone to Mars, perhaps even out of the solar system. But we're still not there. As humans, we're still carrying on this expansion. We're carrying on this path of knowledge and it's extremely important to do it. To me, being part of all this is a pleasure and an honor. Now the final countdown has started, a last symbolic detail will mark the mission of Nespoli and his crewmates, the Russian Sergei Ryazansky and the American Randy Bresnik. They will launch from the same platform as Gagarin's first mission. Today the astronaut's job is very difficult and intense, so can you imagine the complexity of the moon missions 50 years ago? Let's look back at that great leap for mankind in Legends of Space with Frank de Wynne, head of the European Centre for Astronaut Training. My first memory from the Apollo mission is when actually the landing was occurring on the moon. I was about eight years old at that uh, time and I know that my parents uh, got me out of bed uh, in the middle of the night uh, to go and watch uh, the landing, which was for me, of course, a, a very special event. 12, 11, 10. Space nine, missions as the Apollo missions are certainly an inspiration for the future. Uh, generation. During the era of the Apollo missions, uh, there was a big drive in science, technology. If you see the number of PhD students that uh, were graduating during that uh, period in the United States, but not only there, also here in Europe. We should go and explore the moon to see if we can exploit also all the resources that are available on the moon and to see if we can use it as a stepping stone to go further eventually to realize our dream and to have a woman or a man walking on Mars. Tranquility Base here, the Eagle has landed. That's all for this episode. You can watch all the episodes of Space and Legends of Space at Euronews.com. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. <laughs>